Hello and welcome. In this video lecture we're going to primarily for the sake of completeness not because there's much new conceptual material here go through a worked example of the stable translation. Stable translation is least common in practice probably because performance considerations are oftentimes quite important but if you know full well that you are modeling in a environment where the constraints that your ER diagram represents are likely to change, it may make sense as an, as an interim solution to deal with that volatility uh, to pursue a stable translation. Uh, it's possible. So let's go through a worked example. Uh, pretty easy to figure out what you're going to do in a stable translation because whether this is 1 and n or n and 1 or n and m whether this is partial participation or full whether this is partial participation or full doesn't matter what any of those are with one little exception the exception is one to one and we'll run through that in a second uh, what you're going to do actually no there are no there are no derned exceptions there is always exactly the same uh, it could be one to one as well. Let's model it that way. One to one doesn't make any difference what the participation is. Doesn't make any difference what the cardinality is. We do the following: every entity gets a relationship. Every entity gets a table. Every relationship gets a table. So every box or diamond gets a table, no matter what. And we could change this to M. We could change this to M. We could make this. None, none of it makes any difference. Okay. So let's take a look at the resultant relational schema or if we would like uh, plan for our tables in SQL. We're going to have an X table, we're going to have an XY or the relationship table. This would not normally be named XY, it would be named semantically in accordance with a meaningful verb name. We would give the relationship up here, but since we're dealing with the abstract we don't know what those are. This is not XY but rather Y, my apologies for that. So we have an X table, we have an XY table, and we have a Y table. The X table would have its primary key X number and then whatever other attributes we need to capture for X. Y table would have Y number, primary key, and then whatever other attributes we need to capture about Y. And then the relationship would have both, both of the participating entities' primary keys. X number and Y number, that is both the primary key and a foreign key of sorts. And if there are any relationship attributes, which are relatively rare to review, um, rare have to do with time, typically, dates, durations, etc. And that is the relational schema that we would look for. The good news doesn't change when the constraints change, stays exactly the same. The bad news maximum number of tables. It does, however, it's worth pointing out, avoid the nulls. No matter what the participation is, you only have an entry in this table, the XY table, when there is an instance of an X and a Y coming together. So XY table will have no nulls, which is good. And because there are no foreign keys here or here, there will be no modeling decision related nulls here either. So that's good. Uh, typically the bigger problem is the uh, maximum number of joins. We, you know, Whenever you break the information across apart across multiple tables, you also have to perform calculations necessary to bring that information back together again. And even for a computer, if there are millions or billions or more, uh, things take a little bit of time and so that can be a problem. So there's, trans there's stable translation last because it's probably least important uh, but fortunately or un, also probably the easiest to get a handle on. Uh, thanks for listening. Next up is one more. I know you're probably tired of translation at this point but we got one more that's really important. It's something that in the face-to-face -face version of this class people regularly get confused on and that's a worked realistic example where you're dealing with a a significant chunk of an entity relationship diagram with multiple with multiple entities participating in multiple relationships like this uh, and so 
what does this mean in terms of translation? For example, if this is one n and this is one n, what does that mean? Do we do this one separately and then do we do this one separately? And so forth. So I'll work through an example of that to make sure that you have a handle on it. And then at long last, I believe we will be done with translation. Real important, uh, can't live without it. Uh, but like I said, uh, you probably had enough of it. So study hard, let me know if you have any questions and I will see you online.